Yeah, I want to put it out a quick and dirty on basically heat treating uh, steel that's used in gun receivers and pretty much any gun part you would use, rifle, pistol, no matter what. Now, I know there's a lot of different materials out there you can use. This is, uh, a, you know, I don't know if it's an M14 or M1A1, but probably an M14. Now, to, you know, to create this receiver, that would take a lot of milling processes, of course, I guess. But uh, I started thinking about, I'm going to start making some of my own gun parts when I get a mini mill, and I was looking at some of that stuff, but then I started thinking, well, what the hell kind of materials to use? And I've been researching this now for the last few months, but I got I got I just want to give you the quick and dirty on it because I got an eye for just practicality. Keep it simple, stupid, and that kind of garbage, right? Uh, one of the best things you can use, I know you can use various types of, you know, like, I know the, this is, well, I'll just cut right to the trace. You know, since the turn of the century of last century, you know, the 20, in the 19, early 1900s, they were using 4140 uh, s steel. It's, they call it ordnance steel, ordnance steel. Now, sometimes it could be 4150, a little stronger, but 4140 is a standard to a Rockwell hardness of about 30. That's the simplest, cheapest stuff around. I've seen a lot of stock where you could buy it on eBay, dirt cheap, not expensive. There's stainless steels that you could buy are about the same equivalent. They're easy to machine. You can get, uh, in some cases, you know, like on the uh, AR-15, it's 70-75 uh, T6 aluminum, right? Some of the 22 calibers are 60-61 aluminum, right? The little 22 rim fires, some of that's like that, right? Uh, there's different materials. Now, I know, like, if you're doing a pistol, I know, like, this frame should be slightly softer not soft, should be hardened, but the slide should be harder than the frame. You know, but neither one should be uh, soft. Like maybe the Rockwell hardness on this slide might be uh, 40 and the frame might be 30. But you know, you know what? I'm looking at this because I realized back in the turn of the century, uh, well, actually going back maybe 150 years, say you're going back to like 1880s or something, the, the weapons that were made back then. They started getting really pretty good. I mean, they were using smokeless powder, you know, like the 3030 uh, Winchester wheelie lever actions and all that type of stuff, using a smokeless power at higher pressures. Uh, the steel got a lot better in the late in the eight, in the 1880s and 1890s. So if you're getting some 4140 ordnance steel today and you heat treat it, and you can heat treat it yourself. You know, I looked into this thing about the heat treatment. It's not really. Yeah, it's probably better to have it done, but you know, a lot of times if you're heat treating a part, I'm going to give you the quick and dirty on it. You know, if you're heat treating a part, you might not need to do a whole damn part. You might just want to need to do where the wear surface is, or say you make a hammer for something, you might want to just do the striking face of the hammer and where the pin is in the hammer so the pinhole doesn't elongate. You don't even need to do the whole hammer, right? Uh, you might want to do just where a slide or, or uh, a bolt rubs on a receiver or where the locking lugs engage into the receiver. You don't need to do the whole damn receiver, right? And that's assuming you got something that wasn't heat treated in the first place. Now, when you can, you can heat treat the metal yourself, you can just, you know, there's different color temperatures, like the coolest temperature, like it's not cool, but it, dark cherry red, then it goes to red. Then it goes to orange, then it goes to yellow, then it goes to like yellow white. You just want to get it like an orange, orangish red. That's right about where you need it. And uh, you can heat it up with, you got to use map gas or acetylene, but map gas is pretty safe to use because you're not going to like burn. Acetylene's a lot quicker. I don't even have an acetylene now. You know, I borrow one sometimes, but I don't have one myself. I'd use the map gas. Don't use propane, propane doesn't get it hot enough to get it that orange color or like an orangish reddish color but you know what just like anything a lot of stuff you can get it like super pinpoint accurate but you gotta remember this heat treatment stuff has been around since like 15, you know, 1200 1500 BC when they're making swords none of this stuff was a freaking exact science they just stuck it in the fire you know with the bellows till the damn sword got you know orange <laughs> Then it quenched it really fast. Now I'm going to tell you, normally with regular carbon steel, you can quench something in like salt water. You can even, if it's a small part, you can even like 
really tiny part you could do with compressed air but you want to cool it off fast if it's going slow cool it what will happen is it'll lose its temper that's annealing right if it's a slow cool you lose its temper if you heat something up real hot and you let it cool real slow you know a lot of times the way they cooled it in the old days if they wanted something to lose its temper they put it in the fire got it up to orange you know so you got so it's like it was demagnetized it's the other way to tell but orange color is fine you know and they let it sit in the fire till the fire died down and it was just coals and it was a real slow cooling that made the steel not tempered and much easier to work with it's annealed right now if you're going to be using 4140 some other steels that are about one percent carbon but 4140 is not exactly one percent carbon but it's got like other stuff in it i forgot what the hell it is you know but it's you don't really need to know that you just got to know that you can use 4150 4350 but 4140 has been the standard for like a gazillion years they're still making guns out of that today left and right and it's easy to blow that's the other thing or you could take well i'll, I'll talk about what you could put on it but the thing is you want to, to sometimes with 4140 you might not want to quench it in salt solution or salty water well, you might want to use and you don't want to use a real thick oil and you don't need any special oil the reason i said not to use the water sometimes in some cases and this is from i'm getting this from the experts not my experience but i'm trying to condense it down because i'm looking at man it took me a few months to figure this crap out and i think it, i'm just doing it this way i'm keeping it simple if I want to heat treat something and ain't heat treated, I'm just going to use 4140. I ain't using no other crap. That's all I'm going to use. Um, if I want to heat treat it myself, I'm just going to get some map gas. I'm going to make it orange. And when I quench it, I'm going to quench it in oil real fast. But it's got to be it's going to be transmission fluid, automatic transmission fluid. That's the best thing. Not motor oil. It's a little too thick. You want to, and there's special oils for it that cost you a lot of money. Well, you know what? I'm going to change the, change the transmission in one of my cars, and I'm going to keep that, like, two gallons of oil or whatever the hell it is that's left over. I'm going to keep that stuff around, and uh, when I go to do this, I'll use that dirty oil and just freaking quench it in that crap, or, you know, let the, you know, let the dirt fall to the bottom and just skim off 99% of the top. It'll be fairly clean oil after it sits a while, right? And uh, I'm just going to do it like that. It's simple. That's the way I'm going to do it. And uh, I'm probably going to get a mini mill from uh, a little machine shop. I was kind of looking around at Harbor Freight and Grizzly and all that crap. Little machine shops got one for about 600 bucks. You know, it's got some disadvantages to it. But from what I'm hearing, you know, even people that use the damn thing several times a month, this thing's still cooking no problem for like a decade or more. I don't even think I'm going to use it several times a month. But, uh, you know, the other thing is, with, if you want to um, paint the part, say, for instance, after you're done, you know, I got the little $20 sandblaster, because I don't really sandblast much. Um, you want to really thoroughly clean the part off. You want to actually soak it in something to get all the oils off of it and everything. And also, at, oh, yeah, before you go paint it, I forgot one step. You want to actually temper the part to relieve the stresses. After you... Um, you know, heat treat it, you want to actually temper the part. And the way you temper the part, you stick it in the oven for about 45 minutes to an hour uh, at 450 degrees around there, 425 to 450. I know there's different temperings from like 350 degrees to like 600 degrees. That's Fahrenheit. That's Fahrenheit. So you could do it in a regular oven. That's tempering. That's kind of just relieving the stresses in the metal. You want to do that after you heat treat the part and all that. Then after that, if you want to paint it, you make it look all pretty. So you're going to paint this, I don't know, you know, M14 or something, whatever. Um, you know, I use the Dorico. I like that stuff. But, you know, 30 bucks a camp. Say you're cheapy, right? And you're doing some parts on the inside. Uh, you can use Rust-Oleum as long as you bake it on. You can use that appliance Rust-Oleum make sure it's super super clean and also I know anytime I found out even with chrome you can get paint to stick to chrome or as long as it's etched with not sandpaper but with sandblasting a light sandblasting 
or a bead blast and, and I just use play sand real light real light with the twenty dollar sand blaster just real light just to etch the metal after a thoroughly soak it you know brake cleaner and all that kind of crap blow it off with compressed air and then when you paint it you just let it you know let it dry air dry and bake it in your oven for 300 degrees for about 45 minutes or so and with uh, you can just paint it with freaking rust-oleum uh, appliance paint for like four bucks that's the way I'm gonna be doing shit. I ain't gonna spend big bucks on this crap. No way in hell. Guys, I got an eye for practicality. So just again, 4140. Stick with that. Simple as crap in the world. It's easy to blue. It's the, it's the standard of, of rifle and gun parts all around. I mean, it's not the only thing that's out there. I know there's there's 775 T6, which is the heat treating aluminum. Uh, 6061 for like little stuff like 22s and stuff and there's uh oh yeah there's like a type of it's not brass it's almost like you know the yellow boy frame receiver is made out of it's like a copper zinc alloy or some crap that's some other junk that's out there i mean you don't need to get into all that garbage you can get you can just stainless steel there's different types of stainless steels there's uh 4150 ordnance steel and there's also 4350 ordnance steel. I think it's 4340. It's just 4140. That's all you need. And you know, if you need to heat treat something, just make the damn thing orange. Use the map gas. That's all. Then quench it real fast in your uh, transmission fluid, and bake it in the oven. <coughs> I think it's like 45 minutes or so for uh, <coughs> just to relieve the stress. That's the tempering. Like they'll tell you, there's charts out there, but you know, none of this stuff is that exact. I can tell you that right now. <coughs> like they'll tell you, 400 degrees is for like, you know, drill bits or something, or hacksaw blades or some bullshit, and 500 degrees is, I don't know, it's, it's you know, whatever. It's it's just like you know, it's like you're not it, this stuff. I don't think is that super super exact. Let me put it to you this way: <coughs> if you do, but do you do this? <laughs> You're probably making gun parts better than half. The, I'd say probably 90% of the stuff that's coming out of China, because you know how they're making it. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, right? It's not going to be really wrong. That's how I'm going to be doing it. Now, if something's really mission essential, critical, like the heads, you know, doing a barrel and getting head space, you know, I'll buy a barrel. You know, I'll buy a barrel. But if I'm making gun parts, it's just going to be 4140. Plenty strong enough. Because a lot of times, a lot of the parts in the guns aren't even that. They're just some of the some of the parts, like the trigger guards in the guns and stuff, are just you know uh, you know softer aluminum, not the 70-75 T6 aluminum or nothing like that. And um, 4140, it's even when it's hardened, it's not that difficult to machine. I heard it's not too bad. You know, you'd be able to do it on a little mini mill, get a little lathe and all that kind of crap. So. Just want to put that out here because, you know, the one thing I was always wondering about was the heat treatment. And I'm thinking, you know, I ain't going to send something out to have a heat treated for 50 or 100 bucks and then wait. <laughs> when I can just take a, you know, I can just take the map gas and, and my used transmission oil that I kind of filtered out and just do it myself. What the hell? I don't give a shit. I got to wait around for that shit. You know? That's all you need to do. Get it orange. Get it orange. Quench it real fast in automatic transmission fluid. Then, uh, temp, you know, temper it in the oven with, you know, about 400, 450 degrees or something. That's about it. That's all you need to do. It's not that perfect, man. I looked at this, and, you know, there's so many people that seem to be fretting about all these little tiny details. I know you got to be accurate with shit, and you got to do things right. But, you know, you're also starting with steels that are better than what they were in 1885 and 1895. When you're getting some 4140 steel, you're ordering it from a place that's already, you know, the basic shape that you need, some kind of stock, you know, whether it's round bar, square bar, flat stock, whatever. You're getting something that's a lot better quality than, you know, stuff that was made, you know, in the late 1800s. And the stuff, any rifle you buy in the late 1800s, that's from, like, made in the USA or Germany or Austria or something like that, or even Russia, you know, or England or UK, that stuff's really quality, man. Still quality today. They don't make no crap. And I guarantee you the standards weren't anywhere near what's going on today. So, 
sometimes I think people think about an equation too deeply and they get lost in all the details too 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 much it's like you want to do a good job but then again sometimes people get a little too nitpicky you know it's like you know you can keep it simple so I'm just putting it out there for this reason I'm just telling you this is how I'm gonna be doing the crap I'm not gonna get too involved with this shit I'm gonna do it one way 4140 ordnance steel the standard that's been around forever the stuff that's a little bit better than that but this is the stuff that's commonly used in almost all gun parts that are good quality and you know steel like 4140 ordnance steel does wear better than pretty much any freaking aluminum out there even if it is the freaking 770-75 T6 and uh, you know they also uh, the heat treatment on it get it to, and doing that orange color and quenching an automatic tre uh, transmission fluid that'll give you a heat treatment of around 30 Rockwell hardness which is pretty much the standard you know and then you temper it you just you can use a regular oven for that crap to temper it no big deal man no big deal so I know I repeated myself a few times, but you know I just want to emphasize, just just this whole damn thing could be not that difficult. Cause man, I was looking into this shit, I was getting confused after a while. Just too many people telling me too many different things. But then I started boiling it down to certain things where you know what the real experts were telling me. This is how I'm going to be doing it. You don't need to get too crazy with it. Not at all.